Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. We are in the month of October. What a glorious month. We had a glorious time yesterday. Listen, this month the Spirit of God is taking charge. I can sense it already. Holy Bahisko Ben, the Father, day. He is taking charge of your heart, He's taking charge of your mind. You must grow in this month, praise God. You must grow. Two things that are going to happen this month. Growth and alignment. Growth and alignment. And when alignment is taking place in your life, the first place you will notice it is in your mouth. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I receive now my daily bread. Even as I demand it from you. It's coming to me freely. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord has spoken that this month is a month of prayer. Hey, it's a month of prayer. Have you begun to pray? I said, it's not you. It's not a mechanical thing. The, the Spirit of God is pouring out. There's, a, there's an out, out pouring of the Spirit of God afresh in us. Remember, when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, what happened? They began to pray. They began to pray. They didn't go out and start healing the sick and doing all. The, the first thing was their mouth was affected. They began to pray in the Holy Ghost. They began to pray in other tongues. So, so even this month, there's, there's, there's an outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the earth. On the earth. So this thing is going beyond us. This thing is going to every nook and cranny of the earth. People will just be where they are in, 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 in the ends of the earth. And suddenly there's, there's a quickening in their heart to pray. There are people who will think you don't, they don't know God. Maybe you think the gospel has not reached them. But the Holy Ghost is doing something. See, he's doing something in them. There are people the Holy Ghost is reaching out to that have never heard the gospel before. But they are having an experience. Now, guess what's going to happen? The Spirit of God is going to bring them to the place where they will find people who can tell them about the experience that they've had. So every child of God, you are a soldier right now. You are a preacher bearing witness exactly what Jesus said. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Yeah. So be ready to share. Oh, I don't know. There's this experience I've, I've been having. I, I, I just feel like something wants to come out. Say, so let it come out. That is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's God. People get filled with the Holy Ghost more than ever before. People are getting re reignited with, by the Holy Ghost more than ever before. There is an outpouring that is taking place this month. There is an outpouring that is taking place this month. Everywhere, every, it has no barrier, no religion will be a barrier, no, no tradition will be a barrier. Something is happening in this month of October. Something is happening. And listen, the first thing that will be affected, I said it earlier, the first sign of growth in your life is in your mouth. What are the things that are coming out of your mouth? You will just notice. See, when the Holy Ghost is the one doing something, okay, you, you realize it. See, you realize it. Then you plug in. For example, those who've never spoken in tongues before, okay, and then you're praying and then the Spirit of God comes upon you. And you're just praying, oh, Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord. I bless you. What's that? What did I just do? Hey, what's that? Huh? Okay. Huh? 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 Oh, Father, I bless you. Oh, glory to your holy name. Did I just, what am I saying? Now, what do you do, Lord? I receive it. I receive it right now. And then you open your mouth and just go all the way. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't try to stop it. 
Just go all the way. Don't, don't look how high it's sounding. Just go all the way. <laughs> What's going on? The Holy Ghost is doing something in you. Number two, you will notice that there is a new level of boldness that you're beginning to find in your own heart. The boldness to trust God more than ever before. You begin to experience that boldness. You just feel, listen, boldness to do supernatural things, boldness to believe in the supernatural, boldness to trust God more. Boldness not to be ashamed of God and the gospel. Now, these are the work of the Holy Ghost taking place in you. There is something happening in you. Now, now, I come there for this. I, I, I've, I've done this teaching before. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost did not just fall on 120 people. No, the Holy Ghost fell. 120 people were gathered in one place, okay? But when the Holy Ghost fell, he fell on a multitude of people. Now, the 120, because they have been trained and taught by Jesus, these are the disciples of Jesus. So they have been taught and trained by Jesus. They have seen Jesus praying the Holy Ghost. Yes, they had. Yes, they, 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 they did see Jesus praying tongues. People argue, did Jesus ever pray? He did pray in tongues, brothers and sisters. He did. How couldn't have? How would you even think he never spoke in tongues? It's even recorded that he spoke in tongues. Now, you, you may look at that scripture like, eh, but he didn't say he spoke in tongues. How could he have said he spoke in tongues? When, <laughs> when, when Luke spoke about it in, in Luke chapter yeah, Luke was the writer of Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 10. I think I should show you that scripture. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Now, verse 21. Now, this was when Jesus sent the 70 disciples out and they came back rejoicing like, whoa. Now, let me read it from, from verse, 20, verse 17. Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy. Please follow this story. Now, the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Did you see that? You know, you know. There's that season in your life, you just love to display power, you just love to command devils and, and you see them do what you say, you feel, yeah, wow, man, there's so much power. And Jesus is saying, you know, hey, <laughs> nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Don't rejoice in it. Is it bad to rejoice in it? No, he's saying, don't get carried away with it. No, that's not the main thing something better something bigger than that he said but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven whoa so so spirits can be subject to you even if your name is not written in heaven so jesus had to put that caveat you know hey relax don't because I, I can imagine judas was one of the people rejoicing here <laughs> it's god yeah and, and his name is not written in heaven. Oh, Pastor, why do you know Judas' is not, name is not? His name was never written in heaven. I can tell you that for free. Judas' name was never written in the book of life. Another this stuff. But I trust the Spirit of God that will delve into those things because they are important even with prayer. But rejoice, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Now look at verse 21. In that 
hour. Now, when he says in that hour, he's saying that time. Okay, okay? he's not saying 60, 60 minutes time. In that hour means that very moment. Okay, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, "Take note of this." Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, now this is a communication that if you don't understand what he said here, you won't get it. Now remember, Luke is a disciple of Paul, the apostle, okay? A very close disciple. And if you understand their language, then you would know what Luke wrote here, okay? Now, Luke couldn't have written here that, and Jesus spoke in tongues in that hour and said, remember, Paul taught that if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays and my understanding is fruitful. Okay. And then he even goes for that as in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I think verse 14 says, what is it then? I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with my understanding. Then it says, I will sing. Wait, let, let me read it to you. So you don't just think I'm just quoting this thing off my head. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're, we're dealing on prayer. Boro setenemia askia. First Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 14 and 15. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? What's the conclusion? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. What's the saying? For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit is praying. So, I will pray with the spirit. What does that mean? If I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. So, he says, so the conclusion is this. I will pray with the spirit. So, I will pray in tongues. Then also, I will pray with my understanding. So, you see me doing the two. I will pray in, the, in tongues. I will pray in my understanding. I will pray in tongues. I'll pray in my understanding. When you hear me pray in tongues, I'm praying in the spirit. See, when you hear me pray in my understanding, then I'm praying with normal, more like praying in my own tongue, praying in the flesh. You hear what I'm saying? So, because now my flesh means mind. I hope you understand that. Now, it says, I will sing with the spirit. So what does it mean sing with the spirit? It means sing in tongues. Now, that was their mode of communication then. So when someone says, he's laughing in the spirit, they understand what they are talking about. Okay? If someone says he is rejoicing in the spirit, it's not just about running. You know, you know there are times we've been in meetings where the, the, the Holy Ghost moved so powerfully. And you see people rolling their legs and running everywhere and shouting, Yay! Yay! You understand that? That's rejoicing in the spirit. But then, it's not just... You see, that must be connected because now when the Spirit of God is in a place, please understand this, the evidence that the Spirit of God is in a place is in the utterance. The evidence that the Spirit of God is in a place is in the utterance. If there is no utterance, I beg, I, I listen, just, just listen to me now. No matter the shaking, no matter the dancing, no matter if there is no utterance, I doubt if the Spirit of God was there. The evidence of the Holy Ghost in a place is utterance. So when you say the Holy Ghost moved powerfully in a place, you want to check out for the utterance. You want to check out for the words that came forth. Okay, so when you say they were just rejoicing in this, oh, the Holy Ghost was just everywhere. They was just rejoicing in the spirits. 
Okay, so what do you mean they were rejoicing in the spirit? What the, ah, everywhere was, everybody was just shaking and, and, and they were dancing in the spirit. What do you mean they were dancing in the spirit? How do you dance in the spirit? <laughs> Praise God. Now, for, for it to qualify as a dance in the spirit, it must be accompanied by words in the Holy Ghost. Please understand what I'm telling you. For it to qualify as a rejoicing in the spirit, it must be accompanied with utterance in tongues. Yeah. So when Luke writing here said, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. What's Luke saying? In that hour, why did he call it rejoice in the spirit? Because he, he could have said in that hour, Jesus prayed in the spirit. He didn't use, he didn't say prayed in the spirit. He said rejoice in the spirit. So there must have been an expression that exudes joy, but it was accompanied with words in the Holy Ghost. So that's why Luke now said, look at, look at the framing of the words now. Please understand this. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, so they heard him speak words in the Holy Ghost, speak words in tongues. Then after he was done, he now said, now this is how you love bread and finish the parota. Now, for Luke to know this about Jesus, Paul knew it about Jesus also. So when you see Paul making a statement saying that, hey, I was, I was, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding. He said that with the authority of what they knew that Jesus did. Are you following what I'm saying? So Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. That's rejoicing in tongues. Now, practical expression of what he did. Because they were just bringing him good stories and good news and, and good testimony. Wow, you know, we got to that place. That man, the man was, he had hunchback. And, and I, I just looked at him and said, be healed. And he straightened up. And I, Whoa. You know, and, and remember, they were all with joy. The Bible said they returned with joy. So they were all just telling Jesus, 70 people, all trying to share their testimony with Jesus. You understand? Now imagine the mood in that place. And Jesus went, Hey, la kalo parote fenganuni saikaba. Now he wasn't praying. He was listening to their testimony. And suddenly there was an outburst. And when he was done with that outburst, what he said in their understanding was, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son will reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are your eyes for this. Oh, the bread of Satomena. What a glorious moment. Now, I can understand this because it's my experience. You understand what I'm talking about? Speaking in tongues and interpreting. It's, it's, it's normal. If you are a believer, it should be okay and normal to you. Not something you start seeking specially. Oh God, give me that. It's just fellowship. And so the Spirit of God is walking and filling all his children all over, bringing them to insight of his doings. And so their hearts are strengthened and being built up for the coming days. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Listen. Wherever you are, can you just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? Can you just begin to rejoice in the Holy Ghost? Just, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray. 
Oboro patunga gara adeni shanta manangrania. Thank you, Jesus. You see, it's, it's with this that you begin to walk in the realm of visions. Yeah. And, and let me tell you the truth. You don't need to pray for so long to even enter into the realm of visions. We'll talk about all these things. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. My, my time is about. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.